shoot, we'll just ask right now. So let's get into right. why we're even doing this in right. the first place. Well, I think that you are a part of all these various Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever groups. The same questions come up ad nauseum over and over and over and over yeah, again. Very true. How do I do marketing? How do I do licensing? How do I deal with all these different problems? How do, basically everything that has to do with not taking photographs, 90% of running a photography business, yeah. the back end, right? So that's what we want to discuss. We want to get into sort of the, the nuts and bolts of running the business rather than just making pretty pictures because, frankly, you've done that already. Pictures are the easy thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? That's the easiest part of the job is actually shooting. You know what I liken it to? I, I've heard people, or in my head I've thought of it, of someone who's really good at cooking. Yeah. And then someone says, oh, you do great cakes. You should open up a store. Right. And it's two completely different skill sets. Yes. It's two completely different mindsets. You can right. be a great photographer, but you could be a terrible business person. Yeah. On the flip side, you could be a mediocre photographer. Right. And make a killing. And so. it's very frustrating, I'll be honest, when I see a mediocre photographer, <laughs> all credit to them, yeah. crushing it in business, yeah. just doing way better than me. And it definitely happens, you know? So the business side of things is constantly a skill that you need to work on and refresh and, and fine-tune. So. so you have, you know, obviously you're pretty well-known in the photography community. How much are you blitzed with questions about the business side of it. Say Every you get 100 day. questions, what percentage are there? Well, about I mean, the obviously there's, you know, 50% of it is, hey, I saw you using a new camera on Instagram. What do you think? You know, Canon versus Sony versus Fuji versus Nikon. And I'm like, <laughs> who cares? You could literally give me a, a cool pics from 1997 and I can take a good picture. Yeah. Uh, you, you've lost me. Um, I would say most of the time, at least half of the questions I get are business related, especially when people email me. And they'll be like, I'm a, you know, a student in ABC country, or I'm a photographer who has a problem with a client stealing pictures, or how did you get to the point where you're at, or what's the best marketing move? Do I need to do a printed portfolio? Do I need to focus on my website? Do we have to do SEO? Um, I would say, you know, a lot, a lot of the questions I get are gear related, but also just as many are are business related, and it's constant every single day. Oh, sure. Uh, across Facebook, Instagram, email, um, even even friends of mine who are like. Hey, my buddy Mike Kelly's a photographer. You should hit him up. And I get like a random iMessage from someone who says, Hey, my friend knows you and said I can email you or text you a question. So it's relentless. Do you find that the business questions, though, are much more intricate to answer than the gear? Yeah, there's side? no, I mean, because they're what they're, I think what a lot of people are looking for is a one size fits all question. Yes. It, it's, it's very so cliche many... to say, but the gear just does not matter. I have been photographing with Canon 5DSR. It's a thousand dollar camera at this point. Yeah. Since it came out, I think it's 2014, maybe 2015, yeah. a long time ago. Um, and it has not held me back in any way, shape, or form. I don't think anymore anyone can look at a photo and go, "Oh, that was clearly an icon." Right. I, I think you know. So that, that that's that's just such a personal thing. It doesn't have any impact on your professionalism or whatever. But the business, it's my favorite quote is, how long is a piece of string? People say, what should I charge? Yeah. Or what is the average per photo image for real estate photography or architectural photography? Well, honestly, there's guys who are probably working on a dollar per image, and they get paid 150 bucks a house, and they just pop and drop, yeah. drop and pop, and go all over, you know? And there's guys who are doing 500 or more per image yeah. for architectural photography. So. Or thousands per image if it's an advertising thing mm -hmm. for furniture or some high-end appliance manufacturer. So there's literally this scale, and you can't even say the majority falls within X or the majority falls within Y. It's just all, all over the place. So yeah. the questions are honestly impossible to answer, but here we are attempting to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of uh, what we're going to hopefully talk about is what to do. Are there some things that you see in architecture photography community Things that are done, said, practices on the business side that you just cringe at. Yeah, there's tons. I mean, and, and I think we'll we'll just we'll get into them on a on a bullet point basis. Mm -hmm. But again, people have weird things of making things work for them. That I would be like, are you nuts? There's definitely some things where I'm like, you're nuts. Um, but some things, you know, some people have found a, a weird way to work, and I don't want to say that's the wrong way. Yeah. Unless it comes to giving away your work to everyone all the time, all rights forever, that is the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. 
but uh, but yeah, there's definitely. I mean, there's there's pitfalls to avoid. There's mistakes. I'm sure there's mistakes you've made and money yep. you've spent that you regret. That would oh, yeah. be a, a great video. The biggest waste of money in our photography yeah. career. I think that's one. Uh, I, I haven't elaborated on it too much, but that's a good bulb we could add is the finances. Yeah, it's like not only do you what do you do with your money when you get paid, but where not to put your money. So let's answer another question. Why am I here? Why 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 are you? <laughs> who, yeah. who am I? <laughs> Tell us a little about you, Matt. I've worked. Many different types of jobs. I told you last night I worked in insurance. I worked for a couple of radio stations for a while. I got recruited for a couple of tech companies. Um, then around 2013, I started to do photography as a hobby. And I started, I would do, no pun intended, shoot anything that moves. I would even set myself up for weddings, headshots. Um, and then one night I was with some friends at a karaoke night. And they, she says, oh, yeah, I'm in real estate. I'm an agent. And we have to hire photographers all the time. Yeah. And, I'm like, and it didn't hit me. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. You guys do have to hire photographers. And uh, she said, well, if you're ever open to it, I'll have you shoot one of my listings. I thought, how hard could it be? Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. I did some research on how to shoot real estate, what, you know, tried to take a class on the University of YouTube. I shot the property awful, absolutely terrible photos. Yeah. Um, and the agent told me <laughs> as much, very politely. She did tell me that they were they were not that great. And so I started looking into it. And I'm the type of guy that if somebody tells me if I have an interest in it and I'm not good at it, I want to try to be great right. at it. So then I started doing some a deep dive into it and found out that in real estate, especially here in Kansas City, it was like low hanging fruit. You would have million plus dollar houses, which in this market is like top of the line, and they'd be shot with an iPhone or they're crooked or they're too dark or they're just, you know, clearly not exposed correctly. So I started to do real estate and then I got laid off from my full-time job. And then my wife and I just had a real short conversation and she said, do you think you want to try to do the photography thing full time? And I said, yeah, I'll give it a try. So it was kind of like a necessity type of thing. You're like, this has to work. So. Yeah. I mean, up to that <laughs> point I had done it as a side gig yeah. and it was just additional cash. It was nice spending cash. And I thought, oh, yeah, someday right. I could do it full time, never thinking that I really could. And then I was forced to make it full time. And, you know, I was at this crossroads like, well, do I if I got laid off? So do I go look for another regular nine to five or do I invest my time, energy and money into the photography thing and try to make it my, my full time job? And oddly enough, my, my wife, she's more of the warrior. She's more of the you know, concerned about the finances. I'm kind of a free spirit. Like, yeah, hey, whatever. And she, she's the one who said, why don't you try doing this full time? Yeah, and I'm right. like, who yeah. are you? Oh, needle off the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I said, well, let me try it for a few months. I said, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I said, I, at the, at the very least I can say I tried. Yeah. And that was seven years ago. Yeah. And so I'm still making the decision if I need to do <laughs> <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Yeah, exactly. Is it going to work? But uh, and then so I started doing real estate, but because I appreciated the art of it, I, around that same time, your first tutorial came out. Yeah. And I was kind of at a loss. I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to get there. And then I saw some of your photos along with the tutorial. I'm like, oh, this is great. It took my real estate game up quite a few notches. But then I noticed I really started to appreciate the art of shooting a building. And what I wanted to do was outgrowing real estate. If I wanted to spend 15 to 20 minutes, maybe even 45 minutes, just doing one shot of a living room, I can't. you can't do that in real estate. Right. You got to get in and out. Right. And agents don't have time for it. And it's weird if you're shooting a house like, hey, can I come back tomorrow? And yeah, yeah. Right. Shoot this at 2.15 where the sun's right there. And um, so I started to stop marketing as a real estate photographer and just start reaching out more mm -hmm. to designers, probably the biggest client or the biggest genre I reached for was home builders. Um, there's home builders in Kansas City or Diamond Dozen, yeah. um, but there's like a top 10 that most people know of, right. and I try to go after them. And I landed a few of them as as clients. Some of them I really had to hustle. It took a long time to yeah. even just get in front of them. Right. Um, and then by extension, you know, home builders hire designers. Uh, they are connected with architects. So, you know, I drop the, the real estate stuff. Every now and then I'll still get an agent who wants to pay my exorbitant rates. Yeah. I, I'm like, I yeah. won't say no. It happens. <laughs> I won't yeah. say no to cash, but I'm like, I am priced so far out of it yeah. that I'm like, if someone says, yeah, yeah, I still want you to shoot it. I'm like, why? Right. There's other photographers who probably put 
put out better real estate photos and charge half of what I'm charging. Yeah. But um, yeah, so here I am. I started to, much like yourself, started to have the passion for the business side of it, specifically when it came to like licensing, copyright, and realizing that, especially as entrepreneurs, we have to be all different different types of roles. We have to be not only the photographer, we're accounts payable, accounts receivable. We are the marketing person. Right. We're sometimes we're cold call, all this sort of stuff. And we have to protect our business as well. And so when I started looking into protecting your business via copyright, licensing, agreements, and contracts, I, it, I really started to have my eyes open to how much the world and some businesses take advantage yeah. of photographers who don't know that who stuff. don't know that stuff, yeah. Exactly. And it's a lot. I mean, right. I would say if you surveyed 100 photographers, I think it's the 80-20 rule, 80% of them don't have much knowledge when it comes to things. They don't know what they don't know. Right. And that, that can be very dangerous and hurt them in their pocketbook. Well, honestly. it's such a solo field. You know, I would say the vast majority of photographers are working as a one man or woman show. Sure. And it's uh, it's almost very isolating because your competition, you also have to rely on <laughs> like for advice yeah. and for uh, solidarity in a way. But also, they're your competition, yeah. <laughs> and especially in, the, in your local market, you know, like so. It's like you can get friendly, but how friendly do you want to get? You know, is yeah. it a, is it a is it a community? Well, in some ways, it definitely is. So it's kind of a, it's just a tough thing. Like it's it really very is. almost isolating and hard to find great information about it. So well, and here in Kansas City, especially, and I would assume we're not an anomaly into the rest of the U.S. The creative industry, whether that's you know, outside of photographers, whether that's painters, videographers, whatever, they play things very, very close to the chest. Yeah. And so trying to get information from other photographers or right. kind of putting yourself out there going, you know, trying to say, hey, let's let's be comrades, let's be buddies and help each other out, rising tides. So many of them just don't, yeah. they want nothing to do with it. Right. And uh, which well, I understand. In, same in a big city. I'm in Los Angeles and, you know, it's kind of an arm's length kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> Uh, I have really good friends in uh, in other genres. You know what I mean. Um, but it's 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 difficult to, um, you know, to find like a group where you can freely discuss this kind of stuff. Yeah. And not have to worry about like what's going on. Well, and I, I mean that's a big advantage to social media, things like Facebook and Instagram, where if someone is in. Florida or Oregon or wherever. I'm in Kansas City, so there's little to no hesitation on my part to like divulge, you know, what's labeled secrets or right. anything like that. Right. Um, and I don't honestly, I don't, I don't feel that bad about relaying some some specifics, even when it comes to pricing, to even local photographers, because mm -hmm. I know other photographers that do an amazing work, and sometimes even better than myself. And I know they're charging seventy percent of what I would charge, yeah. and I'm going. Dude, yeah, charge more. <laughs> I love. I I do enjoy when you know I I share pricing info with someone and it because it kind of opens them up to like oh my god like he's they don't getting... know how much your stuff's worth. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so I'm I'm not that hesitant to to kind of reveal that again. I I probably it's probably a naive mentality, but yeah, rising tides raises all ships, and yeah. so if we can all, especially in, you know in my area of Kansas City, if we can all get on the same page, especially when it comes to usage and copyright and all that stuff, and if, if our pricing is somewhere in the same area, granted, there will always be variances, but I would love it. And it's probably pie in the sky. But if someone could pick, start picking their photographers based on just how much they like you. Right. And maybe the style of the, the end product. And that's it. Yep. If photographer A is 2000 for a job and photographer B is 2000 well, photographer A and I have known each other for a little bit longer. He's easy to work with. And, um, you know, and I just, I like his style. Right. A little bit better. That way, photographer B shouldn't feel too bummed out if they lost the job. I'm bummed out sometimes if like, oh, yeah, they they undercut your bid by like a $1,000. Yeah. I'm like, well, dang it, man. This other photographer is good. They should be charging more. So there's there's frustrations on both ends. <laughs> that's that's a, a, a long-winded answer to your question. Uh, Matt and I are doing a series of sort of short form, more concise videos. This isn't an 18 hour, 24 hour tutorial or anything. These are hour long, straight to the point, sort of nuggets of business wisdom that can be purchased as a one off or a package type of thing mm -hmm. to help you, you know, further your architectural, real estate, interior design, photography career. Yeah, because I, I think even for myself, 
you, granted, you're at a different level in your career than where I am, but I think both of us have information that we look back on and wonder or think, man, if I only knew now yeah. what I knew when I first started, right. I would have been so much better, would have been so much more protected, right. could have made so much more money, right. things like that. So right. that that's ideally what we're hoping to put out. Yeah, and, and, and the majority of photographers, they're working in smaller markets. Not every single photographer yeah. works in New York, LA, Paris, London, you know? So I think it's good to have multiple perspectives on this because I can get up here and just talk about whatever insane, crazy shoots I'm doing. But is that relatable? I don't really think so. You well, know? that's why Mike wanted a slack-jawed yokel like myself to be <laughs> on this tutorial. 